And Jack said, come on, let's, let's go hang out. And so we, we, we went to his house and we, and we spoke. I've got to talk to you, Rob. I need to talk to you. My father keeps telling me to talk to you. Brother Hamlet, thank you for making me look good to your children. Thank you. If you don't make me look good, you'll destroy your children's faith. I'm the only one that can help them to be saved. I'm the pastor. Faith comes by hearing. They ain't going to listen to anybody like you're going to listen to me. It's the pastor that helps them. If you put me down and destroy me, you're literally destroying your own children. So don't do it, all right? Talk me up. Monica, I know you know I'm a bit of a kid, Monica, but talk me up, okay? Make me look good. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's, a, that's a choice he's definitely got to make at some point. Um, but we had a really nice talk the first week, and um, then we had, a, 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 we had another nice talk on, on Friday. I said, Jack, let's go for a drive. Went by the ocean, drove and drove and drove and drove, and, you know, and um, we spent some time talking. And I asked his permission. I said, I'm, I'm going to preach about you today on Sunday. He said, that's okay. I'm going to title my message after you. I said, that's okay, too. Because as we're driving along, I had a thought came into my mind. And I shared that thought with Jack. And I said it to him, and it came out of my mouth in a really weird way. I, I said to Jack, in essence, you don't believe in God because you don't believe in Jack. You don't believe in Jack. And he thought maybe I meant, you know, Jack as in, I don't believe in Jack. Jack can do this. Jack can do that. Jack can, you know. And I'm like, no, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. When I say you don't believe in Jack, it has a, it has a double meaning. Because Jack in our first meeting, was an atheist. And I knew there was hope for Jack because Jack went from being an atheist in the middle of the Bible study, he went from being an atheist to agnostic. As agnostic, as agnostic means you don't know. Atheist means absolutely not. That's a worse position. If you're an atheist, you're worse off than if you're agnostic. At least if you're agnostic, you're, you're open to it. And the following week, Jack said, you know what, Rob? When I'm done, I'm, he's doing this big fast. When I'm done my big fast, I want to get baptized. But I can't baptize him yet. You know why I can't baptize him? Because Jack does not believe in Jack. <laughs> I know you're confused. Stay with me. So I looked up in the dictionary. I said, Tamara, I don't want to say the wrong thing. You might have a bad name. Look up what in slang, slang language, because I remember in my day, you said to something, so if you said to somebody, you don't know Jack. Am I right or wrong? It means you don't know nothing. Eh? I, you know, you heard that. It's okay. You don't know Jack. Maybe that's what I meant. You don't know Jack. So, I don't mean that he doesn't know anything. Jack is a, is a, is a very, very intelligent person. He's very quiet. Great conversation. Mother Regan, great conversationalist. Talks. Brother George talks. Communicates, re articulates really well. He's just quiet. So, hey, all you guys, all you brothers, Jack, hold your hand up. Don't mind, that's a little higher, don't be shy. That guy over there, that's Jack, all right? Get to know him, please talk to him. And um, he's challenging himself to come out of his shell. And we are, hey, yeah. yeah. So he's like, I wanna come out of my shell, let's go, Rob, let's talk. Let's see if you have anything of substance to say. So I told him, I said, Jack, let me say something. When I come into your presence and I talk to you, you're gonna feel better after you finish talking to me. 
He, and Jack, he can say amen to that too. He's like, you know what, Rob? You know, I, I've been with all the friends and everything, but I, I came home, just felt like really hard and a chore. But after I finished talking to you, I feel really good after that. I wonder why. I don't know. But when I say you don't believe in Jack, that guy over there does not know what he really is. That guy over there, I told you I'm, I'm picking on you, Jack. Jack believes that this is Jack. In the same way that before I was a Christian, I thought this was Robert. And I did not believe in Robert as in, inside of me is the real Robert, and this is just fading flesh that shall one day die and perish, and when it does, Robert still exists when my flesh is no longer there. It's just a vehicle, a means, a vessel, a means by which you carry yourself through the world. Jack does not believe in Jack. Jack can see Jack in the mirror and Jack can say, you know what, I'm going to make Jack better, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that to make Jack better. But I am here to convince Jack that before Jack can get baptized, Jack has got to believe in Jack. And only when Jack starts to believe in his true self what he really is, can he get baptized because only then will he believe in God who made Jack. And only then will he realize that he has to give an account to the one who made, not just his flesh, but the man, who, the one who also made the spirit that we call. I said to Brother Regan, I said to Brother Regan, Brother Regan, what is the name of, of, of your son? And you said your son's name was Jacob. And I want everybody to understand here, when Jack stands before God at one time, Jack will not stand before God as a flesh. Because no flesh can stand before God. Even if you came before God as flesh, God would consume your spirit. God would con consume your flesh. So Sister Fatmata, if you walked up to God, the glory of God would consume your flesh and just your spirit would be left there. Because no flesh can stand in God's presence. No flesh can see God. Any flesh in God's presence dies. Just for the sake of my taping, somebody hug him. <laughs> all right. Yeah, like, <laughs> Run. Yeah. Oh, Mama Nancy, your grandchildren are making all kinds of trouble. <laughs> Grab him. Pick him up. Pick him up. I just, uh, just for the sake of, yeah, send babies and bring him to grand. There you go. Let's go to, to Matthew chapter 22. I want him to understand that the way he thinks and the way he believes, there is biblical and scriptural precedence. In the book of Matthew, chapter 22, sister, how are you feeling okay? You're getting there? Slowly. 22. And verses 23, we're going to read about a group of people that were spiritual leaders, and these spiritual leaders also did not believe in Jack. <laughs> and when I say Jack today, I am calling your inner man Jack. I am talking about your spirit being. I'm calling him Jack today for the sake of my friend who's sitting over there by the name of Jack. Because Jack, every single one of us who are here today, every one of us who are here, the vast majority of us, we completely believe and thoroughly know that we are not just a body, that we are spirits in a body. Can we all say amen? amen. Is there anybody who does not believe that you're a spirit in a body? Everybody does. And like me, I only came to understand that I was a spirit in a body 
when I became a Christian. Until then, I thought this was Robert. And until then, I thought there was nothing more to me than this. And I had fun in this, and I did, I tried to make this as good and this as cool. I did everything I can to make this, the, this flesh that was supposed to be me better. Then I became a Christian. And maybe because God knew that one day I would have to be a preacher, he allowed certain things to happen to me that does not happen to most people, but I tell you that it happened to me to tell you that I have a more sure word of prophecy for you today. For I have seen my own Jack. When I was in school, I tell you this, and I tell you before God, no lying. I told you, most people do not understand that they are spirits in bodies until their body dies. And they wait and they wait until their body dies. And when their body dies, they feel something coming out of their body. And they're able to look around and see their body. But then they can't go back in the body and they get pulled away. And they're no longer here. I'm telling you what happens when you die. When you die, you'll ex I'm telling you, I am telling you before God, when you die, you'll experience your spirit coming out of your body, and what comes out of your body will look exactly like you. And you will not be a puff of light. A human spirit is not a puff of light. Your spirit is being molded by your body. If you're a female, when you die, a female will come out of your body. Go tell that to the, to the legislators who want to change. You can change the laws, you can change this and change that. It, you can think you're not one thing or another, but I'm going to tell you before God today that when you die, a female will come out of your body. Don't matter what you change, don't matter what you think. Because you can't change the spirit that God made. Where are you? And everybody waits until it's so late for them to finally see and then it's too late and then they're screaming and they're, and they're like horrified because now my spirit is outside of my body which is not where it's supposed to be it's not good for your spirit to be outside of your body it was made to be in your body if it's not in your body it should be in the presence of God but as I was sleeping in my university My spirit woke up and looked down the, the passageway. Actually, it was, I looked down, the, I was facing the wall, I was sleeping this way. And my spirit looked, it can see down the hallway, like I'm sleeping because there are no limits on what your spirit can see, or it's, it's not limited by the flesh. And my spirit can see something in the hallway. A spirit was in the hallway. Yes, a spirit that was not of God was in the hallway and that spirit was walking down towards my room and it walked down towards my room and it got to my room door and when it got to my room door my spirit got up and most people don't see this they wait till they're dead to see it and then they're terrified but I'm telling you now, so you know, oh, that's what the preacher said. Yes, that's what's going to happen. I said my spirit lifted up out of my body, still connected, turned around on the bed, and my spirit sat down on my bed and was looking through the wall and was looking at what was outside of my door. And I said to myself, if I'm sitting here, why am I there? So I'm tossed between the spirit at my door and my body on the bed and that's all going through my head at one time and I'm looking at the door I'm looking there and all of a sudden what was outside the door came inside my room 
And when it came, because I'm not a because I'm not a tonguesy person, I'm not trying to prove I have the Holy Ghost by how much tongues I speak in. But I got the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit came into my room, and when it came into my room, my spirit began to speak in tongues and rebuke it. And God is showing me, this is not your flesh doing this. And when I began to speak in tongues, my physical man lifted up halfway and my spiritual man went down halfway. And the two met in between and it kept on rising up. And I rose up and I could still see what was happening. Now I'm seeing with Rob's eyes. Now I'm seeing with the jack on the inside of me. And that man kept on seeing, speaking and rebuking. And the thing went out that way, couldn't get any closer to me. I saw my spirit. I saw my jack. And because I saw my, I believe in my spirit because I've seen my spirit. But before I believed in my spirit, <laughs> I, I was maybe like, a little bit like these people in Matthew 22, 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees. And it just says it simply, which say that there is no resurrection. And say, it, Master, Master, uh, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise, and raise up seed unto him. Now, there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he was married to a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third also, unto the seventh. So this poor lady got married seven times, each time the husband died, and she had seven husbands, basically. It was trying to, and, and, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ludicrous situation. They're trying to show something by what they say. But just making fools of themselves. And, I, and the last of all the women also died. We can prove that there is no resurrection. Because he says, they asked him this question. They said, therefore, in the resurrection, or if there be a resurrection. Because what he's saying is, what they're saying is, guess what? These people here, they don't believe in Jack and they're trying to prove that there is no resurrection for in the Jewish law if a woman has a, has a wife I mean if a man has a wife and the man dies and doesn't have children let his brother take her and he raises seed and then they have it continues God does not want the name to die of that have the house to die so she had seven husbands who is her husband then and Christ said to them they're saying it to say that there is no spirit because you can't determine whose husband she is. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. And Jesus said unto them, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of the resurrection, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are as angels of God. And angels are spirits. So Jesus said, I believe in spirits. They don't believe in spirits. <laughs> a, 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 a Jewish faith that does not believe in spirits. So someone says, bro, oh Rob, how do you, how do I know they don't believe in spirits? How do I know that? Based on this, can I tell they don't believe in spirits? No, but they're, but by saying, who is she? They're saying there's no resurrection. Now listen, brother, brother George, if there is no spirit, there is no resurrection. For what is to resurrect? You see, the resurrection is the resurrection of your spirit. Listen to this. <laughs> Listen to this. Go to the book of Acts now. Let's go to the book of Acts. Now the Bible is going to give you some more clarity. It's going to tell you more specifically, Acts chapter 23 and verses 28, verses 8. It's going to show you exactly what these people actually believed, what they're trying to prove. These people, this religion, didn't believe in Jack.
23 verses 8 says this. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. That's in Matthew 22. But it continues on. He says, neither angels nor spirits, singular. But the Pharisees confess both. So the Pharisees, they confess that yes, there are angels and there are spirits. But the Sadducees, we don't believe in Jack. We don't just believe in no spirit in a human. We don't believe in any spirits at all. That's a dead religion, isn't it? And it's a very dangerous thing if you don't believe in Jack. Because you see, your flesh is temporal. Jack, <laughs> Jack, and when I speak to Jack, I am speaking to both of you. I am speaking to both your flesh and I am speaking to your spirit. So your flesh hears it, but you need your spirit to awaken for there to be faith. Because if your spirit is dead, when I speak, your spirit, your, your flesh can't believe. Not like this. Your flesh, your flesh cannot believe the word of God. But when your flesh begins to be awakened by the word of God for faith comes by and hearing by so be careful when you hang out with me Jack because your faith is going to start I'm telling you I keep telling him I am not trying to convince Jack to become a Christian and I will not and cannot baptize Jack until he has faith but you got to be careful when you hang out with me because that good feeling that you get from hanging out with me, that's a spirit. And that spirit is going to build faith inside of you. And that spirit is going to start to challenge the way you see things. And it's already started doing that because I'm talking to Jack. And, and Jack says, you know something? My life has purpose. And if I was the product of evolution, it means that my life has no purpose. But Jesus Christ, the living God, he gives your life purpose. And without Jesus Christ, your life has no purpose, Jack. <laughs> your life in the flesh has no purpose. And when you die, you say, there is no me, so it doesn't matter anyway. How futile is your existence? Jack. So when I speak, I speak to your flesh and I speak to your spirit. Because your, your brain is very intelligent and your brain can play all kinds of tricks on you and your physical brain you've got to start to get to the point all of you if you don't believe that enough and, and my brother was there to convince your brain and some of you who are here you've been coming for a long time some of you children who are, grew up in the church and you're young maybe you believe the degree of your faith I don't know you've got to realize that your brain will play tricks on you and your brain will make you think, yeah, yeah, let me go to the, you know, I'll go to church here. And I'll come to, along here and yeah, I'll go with mom and dad because it kind of pee, it keeps the peace in the house. Uh, hey, let me tell you something. You can do that. You can come along and you can drag your physical man to church uh, and I can preach to your physical man. But unless you have faith uh, and unless you believe uh, that I have been sent by God this morning to preach the word of God to you, for how can they believe unless there be a preacher? And how can he preach unless he has been sent? And I'm telling you this morning that God has sent me to come and preach to you. Amen. To tell you that you are not just a body. You are a spirit. You are a spirit. And the truest you is not this you. The truest you lives inside of you. And your temporal you is not all that there is. For there was a man called John the Baptist. And when he came along, Christ says, don't look at the body. On the inside is, is Elijah. <laughs> but Christ challenged him. And Christ says, they don't, they don't, they don't. In, 
in, in heaven, they don't marry. They're not given to marriage. They're like angels. But like, we don't believe in angels. Christ is saying, oh yes, uh, there, there are angels. How do you know there are angels? I made them. How do you know there are spirits, Jesus? I made them. And I made the spirit separate from the body. And when I made the spirit in Genesis chapter 1, God said, let us, let us do what? Let us make man after, let's go to Genesis, let's go to Genesis. Let us go to Genesis chapter 1. Thank you, son. I think my son told me my tie is not. See, that's all you got to do. How long was it like that? For the whole time or just, just happens? Thank you, son. Naomi wouldn't have told me. <laughs> She's too shy. I don't want to disturb my preaching. We'll get there. Maybe not. Genesis 1, 26. Here it says. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Yeah. Deep. I won't go there. After our, after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the creeping and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Listen to me now. So God, so God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created he them. Uh, he created them how? Male? <laughs> Don't tell me you can change that. Foolish people. Foolish people. One day I was driving down the street and I was with a bunch of drug addicts. And with a bunch of drug dealers and a bunch of bad boys. But I came from an apostolic home. But I was with them and that was my company. And as I was sitting in the car with them, I was looking out the window and I was looking at all the transvestites. And he's like, you're not going there. Yeah. I was looking at all the transvestites and all the guys who wanted to dress up like girls. And it didn't bother me because I lived in that sin. It didn't bother me because I was around that all the time. I was exposed to that all, all the time. I was with all those people all the time. It didn't bother me. It was just, it was just funny, that's all. But one day, as I was driving down the road, and I looked over, and there was a transvestite. My spirit glared out. <laughs> because God was starting to call me. My spirit looked out that window, and I looked at them, and I heard inside of myself, as I looked at them, I heard a voice speaking in my head. Brother George, that's my world. My world is filth and corrupt. That doesn't, that's uh, just a, uh, whatever. You know, that's just the way they are. Who cares? I'm not like that. They're like that. Who cares? That's, that's their world. But I looked out and something spoke inside of me. My sister, I'm telling you, I heard it. And I heard, look what they have done. Look what they have done. To the bodies I gave them. Angry God. Screaming angry inside of me. Look what they have done to the bodies I gave them. If our world thinks it shall escape the wrath of God, because this is all we are, oh, this is the temple of God. We are a temple of the Holy Ghost. His spirit dwells within us. We are not just bodies and we just do it whatever we want to do. The Bible says on the end of time, you must give an account for what you did in your body. Who is it you? Jack. My spirit. 
And the devil doesn't want you to believe in Jack. And until, you know what the Bible says here? The Bible says you're born again. And when you're born again, it's an awakening. Bethany, how many spirits do you have in you? Let's see if you understand. How many spirits does Bethany have inside of her? Which spirits? And? Which one's the third? Yes. There is three spirits in Bethany. There is God's spirit. There is God's spirit. There is her spirit. And there is the baby spirit. Am I right or wrong? Jesus went up to... Um, when he was born, the mother of the mother of um, Elizabeth, and when she greeted Elizabeth, uh, Mary, I, I'm sorry, when she greeted Elizabeth, the Bible said when she greeted Elizabeth, the what? The baby. The baby. Something. The Jack, not her Jack. Oh my Lord. I said, not Elizabeth's Jack. The baby's Jack. The baby's Jack heard the voice coming into itself. And the Bible said that at the, at the, at the salutation, the baby, inside of, the baby inside of the woman began to jump. The Jack on the inside of her began to jump. And it said, at when that happened, another spirit came into her again. And the Holy Ghost filled her and it made her spirit start to jump as well. And in her was the baby spirit. There was her spirit and God's spirit making her feel good. And, and go, what in the world is going on here? Now, now she's got to go, okay, so what just happened there? For the first time, I just felt the baby's jack move. Then I felt the spirit of God that I called jack. I felt that spirit move. And when I felt that spirit move, my own spirit started moving. Right there, Elizabeth began to realize, oh my, there is all kind of, there's all kind of spirits inside of me. There's all kind of jacks inside of me. Brother George? There is a spirit inside of you. And the devil does not want you to believe it. And the devil wants you to have as much fun in the flesh as he can. Because the devil knows, if I can convince you that all you are is just a body. And if you can ignore the fact that you're actually a spirit in a body. Then when your body dies, you must give an account for what you did in your body. And you don't have to do anything as bad as what those people who were changing the body did. You don't have to do anything that bad. But you've got to give an account. The Bible says, and so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And said to them, be fruitful, multiply. And God said, I've given you this. And God spoke to them. Guess what? Guess what God made? In Genesis chapter 2, however, after he created the Spirit. Hey, Jack, after God created the Spirit, the true you was created. God did that. The Spirit that you cannot see. Jack, the Spirit that comes out of your body in the day you die, God created that for, for Adam in the beginning. And then look what happened now, Jack. Then God went into the ground and God got a bunch of dust. And now it changed the word in the Bible, Jack. It changed the word and it went from created to formed. And God formed a body from the dust. And it was just a dead body with no life inside of it, Jack. And the spirit that he had created and the spirit that he had formed were separate, Jack. I'm telling that, Jack, because faith comes by hearing. And you cannot get faith in God until you know what you are. 
And what is death? Axe. Hey, Jack. You're a smart guy. Jack, when you, when you, I want you to do me some research. Ask them what is death. Ask them what death is. Ask a scientist. Look around. Ask them what death is. You know what they don't know? You know why they don't believe? You know why they don't know? They cannot tell you what death is because they don't believe in Jack. They don't believe the spirit inside of you. But this is what happened. The spirit that we call God came to the body that he had formed and God went, and God went, and God blew into that body the breath of life, and man and the two of them became joined together. Woo! I said the two of them became joined together. So my spirit man and my flesh man, they're exactly alike. They look alike, and they're joined together. So when my spirit man goes, and when my spirit, and when my spirit man says, Hallelujah, glory to God, give the Lord the highest praise, Hallelujah. Oh yeah, now come on and give the Lord the highest praise, Hallelujah. When I think of Jesus and all He's done for me. When I think of Jesus and how he set me free, I want to dance, 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 dance all night. Hey, all right. That's why I'm going to give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. When I think of Jesus and all he's done for me, when I think of Jesus and how he set me free, I wanna, I wanna dance, dance, dance all night. Hey, all right. That's my spirit. My spirit gets excited about God. My spirit wants to worship God. Until you know there's a God, your spirit has no reason to awaken. Your spirit just remains dormant. It remains sad. It remains depressed. It remains locked up. But only when God comes and he releases from your heart the, the veil of unbelief and he begins to move away from your heart, that flesh of unbelief, and you begin to peer into what you really are and you begin to see yourself not as just a man because this is corrupt it just gets uglier and uglier and it dies and it corrupts and when you look at pretty Rob or pretty you look at you in the grave you're rotten no wonder people get depressed if this is all there is if this is all there is where are men most miserable But this is not all there is. Go to the book of James. Look at look at book of James. Let God let God speak. Let God speak. Book of James. Hey Jermaine. I'm out of shape, bro. Ah. Uh, my sister Sheila. I just I just I just I'm, 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 I'm tired. I'm tired. But I'm telling you, there's gonna come a day when my flesh is no more, and the part of me called my spirit shall dance before God for years if it wants to. It doesn't get tired anymore. Amen. This part of me gets tired. After I finish singing on a Sunday, guess what? My fingers hurt from playing. My voice gets worn out. This thing is so limited. My understanding is darkened. It can only learn so much. It's gotta be more to me than this. And the Bible says there is. Book of James chapter 2. And look at verses 26, what it says there. What does James 2, 26 say? Somebody read it for me there. What does it say? James. As the? Without the spirit. What is death? The separation of your body. From your spirit, death is what happens when Jack, oh, who got a, what color, anybody else got a, you have another one? You have another one of these? No other one? I haven't got another brown one? 
You have another brown one? Yeah, let me have the brown one. Oh, oh, can I show you what death is? Hey, Jack. Oh, please, for a second. Let me, let me talk to you, my brother, because I'm preaching at you today. <laughs> Don't worry, man. We'll go, we'll go for a big meal one day. We'll hang out. I'll make up for this. But I, need you to, I needed you today for this, brother. Jack, what happens when you die is this. Jack spirit is separated from Jack's body and it goes and it lives forever this thing we bury we dress up in a nice suit we put some lippy on it and we put some flowers around it and we put it into a box because this is not really you but the real you comes out and you will see it you will see it in the day it happens you will say this is what and i pray that god will quicken your understanding you will have no doubt in that day this is what he meant and god said don't fear it i've conquered it it happened to me too and i now to reverse it and if this tabernacle be dissolved you've got another one in heaven well, with the day that your spirit comes out of that body, that's death. No scientist, nowhere will you ever find that proper definition. But God, who is the maker of all spirits, God said, death is, life is the spirit going into your body. And death is the spirit coming out. Let's read Matthew chapter Let's read Matthew. Did I, did I read my, my... Yeah, you read that one. Let's read Matthew chapter 10. There's so many of them I can give you to build your faith. There's a girl who died. Oh, there's a girl who died. Mama was crying. Daddy was crying. Everyone's crying. <laughs> I told Jack, I got to... Uh, sorry, guys, I have to have a testimony. Who knows why God let it happen? When you die, Brother Solomon, when you die, don't come to me. Brother Evans, when you die, don't come. You're not allowed to come, do not come. Or my spirit is gonna think you're a demon. Because no dead person is supposed to come to a living man. And no dead person coming to a living man, will that living man not begin to get anointed and, and, and speak in tongues and rebuke it. My spirit and a, and a demon can't dwell together. It knows it's there. Well, every, every spirit returns to the Lord. That's what he does with it from there. So when you, every spirit, it means it goes back to God. He now he's, he's in control of that spirit. You see, when you die, you're in control. When you return to the Lord, if it is good, peace, paradise. If it is bad, hell. But yeah, so we all go back to him. Where was I? No, no. So I told Jack, I told Jack, Jack, I have to tell you a story. And I don't know why God gave me that vision, but I'm telling you something. Brother, As uh, uh, Brother Hamlet's mother was 84 years old. Sheila, my sister, she was 84 years old when she read her Bible. And she said, my Bible told me I need to be baptized. True story, 84 a Catholic all of her life. She said, my Bible said I need to be baptized. And uh, she was always terrified of death. And this lady, this lady called for baptism. And I said, I can't baptize you unless you believe certain things. And I taught her for about two, three months. Every single, twice a week I taught her. I left my home. I, I went and taught her. I went and taught her. And I taught her. And God, God, do not miss nothing. Stay every time you say you're going to be there, be there. Don't cancel none. You be there. And I, may, I was faithful, I was there for every last one of them. I baptized her in Jesus' name for the remission of her sin. She believed. Her understanding was opened up. God just began to do amazing things to this lady. Even though she spake another language, even though she was old, even though she was 84, even though she had been a Catholic her entire life, uh, she looked at the, she had these statues of, of uh, Mary and Joseph that she made, and she got rid of her statues and told her, you can only pray to God. We only pray to God, and we only worship Yahweh. She got rid of her idols. She came and she got baptized in Jesus' name. And about a month later, she died, Jack. 
Your grandmother, your grandmother died. His mother died. And never before has this ever happened. Because any spirit that's ever come and manifests itself to me, my spirit will always speak in tongues, get anointed and rebuke it. Automatic. It will not come near me. But this lady after she died, about two weeks after she died, she came to me. And I was sleeping, and she came to me, and instantly, I have knowledge in my, in my mind, instantly, it's like, you shouldn't be here, you've, you've died. But there was nothing demonic about her. And my spirit allowed her to approach me, and when she came near me, do you know what a French lady is? She's a French lady. She moves like a French lady. Her dance is a dance of a French lady. And she was overflowing with joy. And she took me and she took me. And I'm, I'm like, and she is, and I, I'm, in, I'm dancing with this lady. And she's full of joy. And she disappeared, which is completely unusual. But the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ and the power that is in the word of God, if you believe, to make you a new creature and to make you become born again by the power of that word and by the power of faith in that word and the power of being born again. What did, what did he say? What did Jesus say? In, in, uh, uh, can, we, can we hold on to Matthew 10? Uh, let's, uh, I got so much to say this morning. I'm not going to rush. If you're cooking, it's going to burn this morning. Oh, I cannot wait until we have built our church. And you're in the sanctuary, which is huge, and you can smell the cooking in there. And there is an outdoor area in our church that's six meters long by 22 meters. That fills all souls. And another dining area that fills all souls. Another lounge room area that fills all souls. Can you imagine that? What sweet fellowship we'll have. All of our, not just our flesh hanging out, but all of our spirits hanging out together. We've got to build this for God. We've got to build it for God. We have to rejoice in it. We have to grow our children up in it. We have to do it. I'm saying that so you remember to me give $30 on. We'll build it. We'll build it. Go to the book of John, chapter 3. John 3, verses 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, that's a part of you. That's flesh. And that which is born of spirit, that's what God made. <laughs> that which is born of spirit is spirit. But you see, what God is saying is that he's not trying to remake your flesh. So what the Bible says about the word of God? It profits, it, the, to the flesh it profits nothing. It only profits your spirit. For that which is born of flesh is forever flesh. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. That which is born by the word of God. That which is born by the spirit of God. That which is born by faith. And Paul says one time, Paul says after you became a Christian, he says, now know I know man after the flesh. I don't know you anymore as this creature. I only know you as a spirit. Because I understand that that is not who you are. Sister Fatmata, that is not who you are. That will die. That will perish. I'm sorry, but you might think you'll live forever, but you're not. That's the problem with young people. They think you'll, you probably think you'll never die. But son, you'll die. You'll die like everybody else. Mm. He says this. He says this. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is... Everybody read together. That which is born of the flesh. And that which is born of the spirit. Is spirit. Someone say, Robert. A dead person shouldn't come and talk to you. A hundred percent agree. But there was this man called Samuel. And Samuel died. 
And Samuel was a righteous man. But God had to prove a point about something. You see, for you and I, we should not communicate. But God can do whatever He wants to do, whenever He wants to do it. And Samuel... Can we turn there quick? Let's go to Samuel. 1 Samuel 28 and verses 11. Oh God, just a few more minutes. First Samuel 28. Samuel 28. Going back in the Old Testament... Just before the book of Kings, you got 1 Samuel, chapter 28. And so my brother Jack, as we, as we talk and we hang out and we become better and better friends, your faith, your faith will and it must grow. And it will and it must grow until someday you say, you know what, I believe in this being that I cannot see. Jack said to me, Jack said to me, Robert, I can understand how I can love God. But how does God love me? Isn't that a good question? Yeah. I can perceive how I can love God. Because you know you have to see somebody to love them? You know that you have to see them, right? If you had a baby when you were back, back, back home, you haven't seen your baby, you still love your baby. Even if it was taken away from you when you're, you know, you still is your baby, still your baby. Even if you have a if you have a brother who you never met but you spoke to him by phone, still your brother, you can still love them. I don't have to see them to, to love them. I just have to know they're there. I don't see my mother, I love my mom. If no, she's there. He said, Well, I can understand how I can love God. But how does God love me? You know a good question? How does God love you? Eh? He died for us. But that was 2,000 years ago. He, he's, not, he's, not, he's not talking. Jack is not talking about the Bible. Jack is not talking about the Bible. Jack is talking... When you, when you, when you talk to people like Jack, who is agnostic or his faith isn't developed, you can't talk to him about the Bible because he doesn't relate to the Bible. And Jack says, I can love God, but how does God love me? How does God love you? You can't say he died, wake up every day, but everybody else wakes up every day. Okay, you have a testimony? So I told him, I told him, I said, oh, I'll bore you. I told him, I said, come here. You see, that's my son. Hey, Justin, here's love. Here's love. God, is, God doesn't... God doesn't drop from heaven some fuzzy love. Do you feel that? That's God's love. I just feel your love. I just feel your love, Lord. Yeah, that's going to wear out pretty quick. Say it again. So I told him, Jack, I love you, Jack. Yeah, that's right. Jesse, I love you, man. I love you, boy. Yeah, I do. Yeah, come on. How do you know God loves you? He gives you someone and he puts it in their heart to love you. I love Jesse. Aaron, love you. Bro. Hey, Spencer. Love you, man. Johnny, I love you. You know I love you. You guys know I love you guys, right? And I didn't let you guys sleep over. You came to sleep. I didn't let you sleep over. <laughs> Y'all came over, I'm like, oh man, y'all come to sleep, y'all gotta go home. Still love you though. You know what I'm saying? I love Justin. I guess I've known Justin when he's a little guy, but I have no more love for Justin than I have for my son or that I have for you because the love that, as a, as I have a paternal love for my children, but there's something greater than my paternal love. Jaren, there is something greater than my paternal love for you. My spirit's love for you is greater than my flesh's love for you. You understand that? I want him to be saved. My flesh wants him. My flesh my son, hey son, you're 18? Yeah, have a beer. We're Jamaicans. Draw this. Smoke that. Danja. That's my flesh. But my spirit's like, no, 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 don't defile him. No, 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 don't set a bad example for him. No, 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 because my spirit loves him 
So Jermaine, when I hug Jermaine, uh, we always hug each other all the time. <laughs> you should, Brother Hamlet, challenge you. You should try that sometime. Your, your, your sons probably aren't used to you hugging them, are they? No, they're not. Come here, I'll show you it's done. Watch this. <clears throat> That's a short one, that's a short one, okay? There's different types of hugs. There's, there's a hug like this, where you kind of go like that, you hit shoulders together, right? It's just, just a shoulder, no arm, it's just like, you know, that's a start out hug. <laughs> Brother Regan, for all these dads who don't know how to hug properly. <laughs> Brother Abnes, this is dad, this is dad hug training. <laughs> what, don't hug? A dad that doesn't hug? Son, watch this, watch this. Hey boy, I love you. Why? Yeah, I love you, man. That's right. Give me a hug. Yeah, you're a good man. You're a good man. Of course I love you. Yeah, sure. That's, that's... I messed it, I messed it first. Up. This has been perfectly sculpted, Dad. Hey? Never my children, never my children ever get up. And don't hug me, ever. Sin. What did I do? <laughs> Is something wrong? Brother Agnes, my son's get up and don't hug me? <laughs> when you see Jaren, what do you do every time you see Jaren? You always hug him. Never, never my sons get up and don't hug me. Never do they get up and don't hug me. Never do they go to bed and don't hug me. Dad, I'm going to bed, yeah. I'm watching TV, yeah, come down. Yeah, that's right, okay. You know? <laughs> never, never. My sons must know. How does, how does God, how does God love you? Love begins with your parents. They cannot know the love of God until their parents show them love from God. That's why you have to be gentle with your children. That's why you have to be nice to your children. That's why you have to show them, because they don't know love until the parents. And, and your mom, love is, begins as maternal. I'm just, I'm just explaining to you it is. So, so one day, Monica, one day, Monica, when you have a little Solomon, and you have a little Solly in your hand, you know, and you're holding it, that, that child will learn love from you. He's got to hear, love you, 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 and then, you know, and, that's, and, and they learn love like that, and you grow them up in that love, and it's like, it's easy for them to, to love because you've taught them that. Okay? Yes? I, I, didn't, I was a challenge that I didn't know how to say I love you. Yeah. And my kids, especially John Jack, mm. Uh, so it's practice, watch this. You told me. I told you. Matter, try and just say, I love you, but practice it. Mm -hmm. And it has become so much part of her that my niece came from Melbourne. She spent a few days with us. And she said, Sister, I noticed something. The way your kids, it's just natural. You all say, I love you so many times. I'm going to go teach my children that. I love that. <laughs> he complained to me, did he? he did. Tell, tell. He said, Yes, that's right. <laughs> Brother Hamlet, Brother Hamlet, be careful. Don't let Jack come complain to me now. <laughs> hey? Hey? When he gets up in the morning, hey, Jack, hey, buddy, yeah, love you, man. And he might not say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You love me? I love you too. Hey? <laughs> He's like, oh, what's this love going around? <laughs> I want to, I want some of this love thing happening here. Let's go. Now, Brother Hamlet, I know I'm teaching you. I know it's in front of everybody, but we're a family, right? You get up, you say, love you, Jack. And Jack might not say, I love you. And, and, and you say, love you, Alan. He might not say, I love you. It doesn't matter. But you got to practice saying that. I love you. But dad, but dad, as you said here, in the past, dad, you did this and you did this and you did that. You just say, son, I didn't know how to love then. I didn't know God. I haven't been taught how to love. How could I love if I've not known 
I can only be taught how to love. So we have to teach you how to love. I'm teaching you how to love. Because even though they're grown men, guess what? They still need your love. Jermaine, do you not still need my love? Tremaine, you know I love you, right? Yeah. This. Mom says I love you. Dad says, you know? People that put in your life says they love you. Let's not be shy of doing that around here, please. Uh, yeah, you go ahead. Huh? You know how Carlton doesn't say I love you back? Carlton never says I love you. <laughs> but I tell you when, the first time Carlton said I love you, I got to tell you when. So, I went to see him, and I'm like, you know what, Carlton? I don't know, man. Here's 50 bucks. So I pulled out 50 bucks, and I slapped it in his hands like that. You know, that's right. Man. We're cool, you know? So I'm about to leave. I'm like, Carlton, love you, man. He's like, love you too, bro. <laughs> He ain't foolish. Hey? <laughs> you love me, gotta prove it, man. <laughs> Put it here. <laughs> That's not why. But I tell him I love him all the time. Carlton love you like. <laughs> yep. Yeah. First time, Crone can say I love you, but that's necessary. How does he grow properly without that love? How does he learn to express love to God if he has never expressed love to you? Then he thinks love is something that you give to your girlfriend. <laughs> or you bought a new puppy, oh, such a cute puppy, I love the puppy. No, you can also give love to God. Yes, my sister. Yes. Every morning, because I used to make his, get up, make his lunch. Yes. And uh, before you leave, he will always say, love you, mom. And sometimes I'm still a bit asleep. Say, mom, love yeah. you, mom. Tell her. Say, you won't leave until I reply. Reply, love you too. Is that right? And drive safely. Yes. He needs mom's love. Mama's boy. Don't be afraid of it, man. Don't be shy. There are lots of reasons why Jack doesn't believe in, in God. And I want everybody in this place to let him understand and to let everybody around you and the children understand that you may not see God, but you will see him through me. And you may never hear him saying while you're here, Robert, I love you. But you'll hear it through me. And I'll tell you God loves you. And I'll show you that God loves you. So, when you come to this place, Jack, and, you, and Jack, when you come to this place, Alan, don't feel like you're strangers here. This is, we are, your, we are your father's family. We are his family. And we, have, we, share, we share one blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. The same blood of your grandmother. Who had, who had, and your grandmother had faith. Your grandmother at 84 had enough faith, Alan and Jack, your grandmother had to cry out to God and say, help me, I'm 84, I need you to show me what's right. And God helped her, and God sent a minister, and she was able to find her way home. Haltingly, but find her way home. And, eh? Matthew? What am I reading Matthew? Remind me. Matthew chapter, oh yes, one last thing, one last thing. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's, that's too much. That's, that's too big. That's, that's, Samuel is too big. Let's just stay with Matthew. Matthew chapter 10? Yeah, yeah, read it for me. Let's just say there. Matthew 10, read it for me. Verses 28. Is it 10, 28? I need the last one. I'll find it. Matthew chapter 10, 28. Let's just turn there real quick. Thank you for that, and then I'm done. Oh, and by the way, and by the way, it would be so nice if Jack did not only get a nice feeling when he came to church, when he, when, he, when he met with me. Wouldn't it be nice, Brother George, if Jack had that nice feeling when he came to church? I mean, why do we come to church? Our spirits feel really good here. We can feel the love of God in the brethren. And how shall men know that you're my disciples? How much we dance and speak in tongues and shake? How much... How shall men know that you are my disciples? By your love. 
by their love. A perceptible, tangible love. Matthew chapter 10 and verses 28 says this. One last thing. One last evidence of Jesus that this Jesus knows about spirits and bodies. They have a girl that died. They have a girl that died. <laughs> and 28, it says this. Am I in the right place? Oh no, I'm in Matthew 28. I mean Matthew 10, Matthew 28. Yes, 28. Fear not, okay, I'll leave it there. Fear not them. Yep, fear not them which, which kill the body, physical, but are not able to kill the soul or the spirit, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. And that's what, that's what Jesus Christ came to give us the awakening to. So all you beautiful young ladies down the back of, hey, Joy, beautiful Joy, how are you doing? Yeah, you, I'm talking to you. The preacher's talking to you. Uh, uh, hey, Joy, there is a jack inside of you. Look after him. Look after her. You have a her jack. I got a him jack. All right? Come, hey, bring Jack, bring Jack to church on a Sunday. Every once in a while, worship, let Jack worship God. One day come and get Jack baptized. So Jack, by the grace of God, my brother, your face shall grow. I am putting no pressure on you and nobody else is. It's going to be so natural, you're going to go, you know what, hey, I'm, I'm, of course there's a God. Never seen him, but that's what, that's what, that's what called to have faith. Let's just rise to our feet. Thy word. Is a lamp unto my feet, yeah, and it's a light unto my path. Oh, thy, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a unto my path. Yeah, when I am, when I think I've lost my way, oh, still you are there right beside me, yeah, Lord. Nothing will I fear, not as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end with thy word. The living God who made the heavens and the earth and made all things seen and unknown, things we cannot see. Just because we cannot see our spirits, it doesn't mean our spirits are not there. It's just our spirits are made of something else that our physical eyes cannot see, but it's still there. And you, God, are made of the same stuff because you said you brought man from yourself. Whatever it is that you are as a spirit, you made us to be of that same stuff. And the only reason we can be like you, for we shall be see him as he is, is because you made us of that same stuff. So we can understand, we can think, we can appreciate, we have a conscience. Things that animals and dogs, everything don't have that. My dog has no more purpose than to eat food every day. My dog has no more purpose than to run around and have fun and bark. But I am not a dog. Neither is any man that you've made. We, even if we live like dogs, we're not dogs. We're rational creatures. We're able to contemplate our existence. Why am I here? Why have I been put here? What is there that makes me me? What is this thing that animates my body? What is this thing that makes me think and, and makes me of a, of a, is it a brain? A dog has a brain, but he'll never be like me. Other creatures have brains. Dolphins are very smart. Birds are very smart. But they're not like us. For they cannot communicate with God, nor are they an image of God. Even though they have spirits, they ain't got a spirit like me. Because my spirit can say, thank you, Jesus. And my spirit can hear the word of God. And my spirit can appreciate Calvary. And my spirit can say, I have sinned. And my spirit can say, I have wronged you, God. And my spirit can repent. And my spirit can feel better after it's repented. Dog does not. A lion does not. It kills without remorse. But a human being, we know that there's something about us that makes our conscience say, I cannot do what is wrong and just live in a way that is wrong. We are different and we know we are. We may deny it, but we know we are. Amen. Continue, Lord, to work in Jack's life. Amen. Thank you for the faith that he has. Amen. 
And thank you for bringing him to the place that he could even come and sit here today and allow me to use his name and use his name. So many people have learned from his example today. And we have learned to love and we have learned to, to share in those things. Bless this house, Lord. This place that we're living in, my physical body is a temporary tabernacle. And this physical place that I am in, this church, this building, is a temporary place. We're looking for another church. It's over at number 391, 1391 Great Northern Highway, Lord. You know where it is. You gave it to us. We're going to build a big building over there for you, Lord. You, you don't dwell. You don't dwell in buildings made by humans' hands. But every Sunday morning, God, we're asking you to bless that place and let more and more spirits just be drawn to that place. We want that to be a place that when somebody drives by there, like Brother Dion drove, walked by church and, and Brother Dion said, something told me to go back to that building over there. Amen. We want when people walk by for that place to be so spiritual that something just attracts them there and they just want to come there and they just want to stay there and abide there and be part of the body of Christ in that place. Amen. Let it grow according to your perfect will. Amen. Sanctify the church, I pray. Amen. Fight our battles for us as we serve for you. Keep us. Remember those who are wounded, those who are broken, those who are hurting in this place. We cannot prove that there is a God if we don't help to heal it. Heal them, I pray, Lord. Mind, body, soul, and spirit. According to your perfect will. Cover them in your blood. And the church said in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.